Hello and welcome to this new section where we will introduce the principal component analysis, also called PCA, which is a powerful unsupervised technique to decrease the dimension of a problem and help for getting all the information that is available in the data. There will be different topics we will cover to reach the goal of this section. First, in this video, we will introduce the subject and see what's the theory behind the PCA and why is it so useful. Then, in the second video, we will visualize the PCA in two dimensions in order to get insights from high dimensional data. In the third video, we will see whether visualization in three dimensions could improve the results. Finally, the last video will show you how to evaluate a PCA, for example by checking if the dimension kept explains enough of the original information or by comparing with individuals or features that will be dropped out of the dataset. In this video, we will see what's the idea behind PCA, how it works and how to implement it using R. First, we will present the idea behind principal component analysis. Then, we will see how it works and what are the steps to follow in order to build our own PCA. After that, we will see some visualization to better understand the goal of the PCA and the fact that principal axis can be rotated. We will then quickly take a look at the tools available in R to do a PCA and finally we will present the new dataset that will be used and that will be more convenient to understand PCA. Principal component analysis is a very old but still popular technique to reduce the dimension of a problem. It is a method coming from multivariate statistics that allows to summarize systematic patterns of variations in the data. Remember, for example, our online retail dataset that contained many features. How could we get insights from our data with so many features? PCA allows to reduce complex datasets into a lower dimensional dataset in order to reveal the structures present in the observations and in the variables. The main idea behind PCA is transforming the observed features into a set of new features called the principal components, which are uncorrelated and explain most of the variation present in our data. In theory, PCA is based on some more or less advanced mathematical derivations coming mostly from linear algebra as you can see, for example, with this recent paper. So, yeah, as you can see. But don't worry, the goal of this section is not to bother you with all these mathematical details, which are not that useful for the purpose of this course, which is to learn how to apply PCA in practice, in your own R projects. To build a PCA, you just have to follow these steps. We will visualize these steps in the next video inside the R Markdown script or using Shiny application. First, you have to calculate the covariance matrix or the correlation matrix of your data, where it is recommended to use scaled data since the PCA is a variance maximizing exercise. From this matrix, you can calculate the eigenvectors and the corresponding eigenvalues. Then, you have to sort the eigenvalues in decreasing order. As you can see on the right plot, these eigenvalues actually represent the percentage of variance that is explained by the principal components. From that plot, you can choose the number of principal components you would like to keep for example, using the same elbow method that we have used to choose the number of clusters K in the k-means algorithm. Or, by relying on your knowledge about the subject, 
or on how you would like to visualize your data. Indeed, it is always easier to visualize data in two dimensions. Finally, you have to transform the original dataset into these key selected principal components where you will be able to visualize more conveniently the features and the individuals. We would like to show you this nice example about gene expressions that will help you to visualize what does the PCA. We are here in a simple case with three features which are genes that are represented in the original three-dimensional space on the left figure. In this figure, we can already see that the data do not seem to be located in all the spaces provided by the three dimensions. Then, we can decide to reduce the three original features, or genes, to a lower number, which will be the number of principal components. The PCA identifies the two-dimensional plane that optimally describes the highest parts of the variance of the data. This is the plane represented in the left plot on which the individuals are projected, and which can be rotated and presented as a two-dimensional component space, as you can see in the right plot. As you can see, with this animated plot, the principal components can usually be rotated in a PCA. Varimax rotation, for example, is used to simplify the interpretation that we can have on the created subspace. So, just keep in mind that the projections of this two-dimensional data onto these principal components will be made such that the projected points maximize the variance and such that the projection can lead to insightful interpretation of the axis. We will see how we can interpret the principal axis in the next video. Now, we will see how to implement PCA in practice. The R language provides a bunch of packages and functions which are basically doing the same thing, which is computing PCA. In this course, we will mainly rely on two packages, the factor mine R, which provides the function to compute the PCA, and then the same package we have used for the visualization of the k-means clustering, the factor extra package, will provide us nice visualizations of the PCA results. Note that the factor mine R package also provides very nice but old tool to do a PCA using the RCMDR plugin where you don't have to code yourself and the script is automatically generated. Now let's dive into RStudio to introduce the subject. During this section, we will mainly work with a dataset which is more convenient in order to learn PCA. So, we will quickly present you this dataset in this video. As usual, we use the tidyverse, and since the dataset we will use is provided by the factor extra package, we have to load this package together with the ggli package which will provide us function to make correlation plot. Then, we can load the dataset that we will use, which is describing athletes' performances. So here you have basically the names of each athlete for the 10 different events, as you can see here. So as you can see, all the features are indeed numeric and during two different competitions, either Olympic J or Decastar. So we have 10 features plus three other features that represent the rank and the points obtained by each athlete in the corresponding competition. So you might also want to look at the same dataset, but ordered by the rank. So since the arrange function does not keep the row names by default, 
we had to put it into a column using this function provided by the tidyverse. We can see here that basically it is the same athlete that finished first for both competitions and same for the second athlete and third athlete. Also, we see that we must pay attention to the fact that the names are in uppercase for the first competition but in lowercase for the second competition. And since R is case sensitive, it would create two different individuals for each of the lower or uppercase names. Then we have to correct that by either putting the athlete names in another created column, as we would do here, because we cannot change the row names by setting all the row names to lowercase, because the row names must be unique. So we will handle that in the next videos. So you might try to have a first visualization of these features. The most important things for the PCA are the correlations between the features, since correlation indicates that there is redundancy in the data. Then PCA can be used to reduce the original variables into a smaller number of new variables, that is the principal components. So to build the PCA, we will just take the features corresponding to the athlete's performances at each of the events, so that we will see if we can reconstruct the rank or the points with the PCA. We can see that by running this code, which will provide the correlation plot, we can see that basically the features are correlated with each other, which makes sense for a decathlon. That is a good thing. Indeed, if there is no correlation in the features, it would not be possible to reduce the dimension of the problem. In this video, we have introduced the principal component analysis, how it works and how we can apply it to the dataset that we have introduced.